In Chapter 1, Microsoft Windows and Digital Skills class, we will be learning the computer components and how they work together. What is a computer? A computer, some people refer to a computer just as the actual unit housing the main components of the hard drive, processor, memory, and so on. But in order to use a computer, we also need a monitor so we can see what we are doing. Some computers, like notebook computers or laptops, or all-in-one computers have building monitors. But it's important to know that the monitor is not the computer itself. The monitor is also called the display and does not do any of the work of processing. It simply displays the computer's interface, which is still an essential component of the entire system. We will also need a keyboard and a mouse so that we can enter text and command and control the computer. We also need speakers or headphones so we can hear the sound the computer makes. Some computers have built-in speakers, but others don't. Computer also needs to have an operating system, which is the software that manages the operation of the entire system. We will talk more about the operating system later. And to use the computer, we also need applications, which are the programs that runs on the computer, such as Microsoft Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, or photo editing applications. Many computers come with built-in software and we can purchase or install thousands of other software applications we might want or need. We may also need additional hardware to have the computer perform other tasks. For example, we will need a printer to print the paper copies of our documents or a scanner to create electronic version of the paper document. These days, the printer Scanner and copier may be the same device. And if we want to get online, we will also need web browsing software, a modem, and to subscribe to an internet service if we want to get on the web with the computer. So at the very least, we need the computer unit itself, a monitor, an operating system, and the keyboard and the mouse to have a computer system. But all of these things are more made up to your computer system. And generally, when we talk about computers, we are talking about any configuration that involves these basic and essential components. So what's inside a computer? When it comes to figuring out how capable our computer is, whether you are shopping around for a new computer, or if you have received a hand-me-down computer for work or at home, you will want to know three things first. How large is the hard drive? How much RAM is installed? And how fast is the processor? Now, a lot of people who are not familiar with the computer have trouble understanding these three terms and what they mean in terms of what the computer is capable of. This is a hard drive. Your computer's hard drive, sometimes also referred to as a hard disk, is the computer's storage device. Think of the hard drive as the filing cabinet where everything on the computer is stored from programs to documents to videos. Basically, anything that stores on your computer is stored on the hard drive. RAM 
or random access memory module. Most people call it RAM or memory. Think of your computer's RAM as the desk in your office. In order to work with the files from the filing cabinet, I will need to have the space on my desk to pile up and organize my files. The smaller the desk, the fewer files and other items I can work with at a time. Same thing, the less RAM you have, the fewer documents and applications you can have running at once on your computer. That's why RAM is one of the most common upgrades people have done to their computers. More RAM means more memory to work with more files more quickly. Adding more RAM is kind of like upgrading to a larger desk. It gives you more room to shuffle around and work with the items you are using. The third item is the CPU or Central Processing Unit. Most people just call it the processor. The CPU is the computer's brain, and it's the item that carries out all the functions of the computer. From processing instruction, from the program you are running to keep the operating system working. So what is in a computer? We have the hard drive, the CPU, and the RAM. In our desk and filing cabinets example, the CPU is you. You can have a filing cabinet full of files and a huge desk to work with those files on. But without you, nothing can happen. Generally, you can upgrade your hard drive space, which would be like upgrading a larger filing cabinet or even an additional filing cabinet so that you can store more files. And you can also upgrade your RAM, which would be like getting a larger desk or work area so you can work with more files at once. But the CPU is rarely upgraded because it is usually came attached into your computer and it requires much more skills to replace. So just as you cannot really upgrade yourself in this example, you cannot usually upgrade your CPU either. Now, of course, there is a lot more inside a computer than just a hard drive, RAM, and the CPU. You have video cards, audio input, an output port, USB port, expansion card, and the list goes on. But storage space, memory, and processor speed are probably the most important thing to consider when evaluating a computer. Basic input devices such as keyboard, touch screen, and pointing devices such as computer, mouse, trackpad, joystick, trackball, light pen, and pointing stick. When it comes time to pick out or purchase a computer, one of the first decisions you will have to make is whether you want to get a desktop computer or a laptop computer. This is an example of a laptop computer. Laptop computers are often also called notebook computers. These computers are designed for portability, often weight less than four or five pounds, and they have the monitor, keyboard, mouse pointing device built in. So you don't usually have to plug in any other accessories to use the computer. This is an example of a desktop computer. Now, the term desktop can mean different things when we are talking about computers. But in this context, desktop refers to all the computer that either sits on or next to your desk, 
or workstation. The computer itself does not have a built-in monitor, keyboard, or mouse, so you will have to purchase them separately. Although most desktop do come with a keyboard and mouse, and they all have to plug into the computer when you set it up. And desktop computers are not designed to be portable or carried around. But how do you decide what type of computer to get? You should only select a laptop computer if you really need the portability. Laptops today are usually as powerful as the desktop computers, but you will usually be spending more money on laptops for the same amount of the power you can get from a desktop computer. Desktop computer also have the advantage of being more upgradable. And laptop computer have USB port for adding external hard drives. But desktop computers usually have more available USB port and also have slots for expansion cards or for additional internal hard drives or optical drives. Desktop are usually easier to upgrade yourself too. Also, if your computer is mainly going to be used in your home or at your office and you don't need the portability, you can get a much larger monitor than you would get on a laptop. Laptop displays are usually around 17 inches. But these days, you can purchase monitors at 23, 27, or even 30 inches or larger sizes. Many laptops offer the ability to connect additional monitors these days too. But you are still going to be paying more. So unless you really need the portability, you will want to stick with a desktop computer model. The third type of computer is called a tablet computer. Devices such as Apple iPads and Android tablets are under this category. They come with touchscreen displays and you operate them by touching and tapping the screens with your fingers. However, I would not recommend the iPad or an Android tablet as your only computer. They are not nearly as powerful or capable of doing professional work. And they run a different operating system than has been found on the desktop or uh, notebook computers. Now, if you are interested in a tablet, but also want the power and capability of a desktop operating system, Another category of the computer to consider is the hybrid computer. This includes computers like the Microsoft Surface Pro, which is a touchscreen tablet that runs the same version of the Windows operating system found on the desktop and notebook computers. So you can operate it with your fingers or you can attach a keyboard to make it more like a notebook computer. But just like with a notebook computer, if you don't need the portability, you would probably want to consider getting a desktop computer. While tablet computers are great devices to have, and you can do all kinds of work on them, from word processing to video editing. At this point, for most people, I don't think they are suitable to be the only computer in your office or household. Hopefully you guys either have a desktop or a notebook computer that you can be working on throughout this course. Here are the general computer terms. User, computer users. Users, anyone who produces or uses the results of processing. Menu is a list of options or choices available to a computer user. Application program, software that helps the user achieve his or her objectives. 
operating system is a software that helps the system perform its tasks. It is also called system software or OS. If you are setting up your Windows computer for the very first time, you should decide what type of user account you will use. You will need some account, a username, and a password, which you will be using each time when you sign into your computer. So first, what is this user account all about? Well, on one hand, it's the security barrier for your computer. Nobody can use your computer without your account password. Another reason for account is that you can set up multiple accounts on the same computer. So different people can use the computer while keeping their files, configurations, and other information separate. Most people only have one user account on their computer, but multiple accounts are a good options to have. So you do need to have an account, but the real question is, what type of account do you want to use? There are two options. First, you could choose to link your computer to a Microsoft account. And then you will use your email address and passwords from your Microsoft online account. Each time you sign into your computer, and you may already have a Microsoft online account, or you may need to just set one up. This account gives you an identity on Microsoft online services. It gives you access to an Outlook.com email account, a free cloud storage tool called OneDrive, and access to many other online services. When using a Windows computer, a Microsoft Online account is required to make purchases in the Microsoft App Store. It's also required to use some features of the bundled apps and services in Windows. This is the option that Microsoft recommends for computers being used by individual people. Now, option two. The other option is to set up a basic username and password that is used to sign into your computer, but has no connectivity or identity with Microsoft online services. This is also known as a local account. You might do this if you don't want this computer to be tied to the identity of a specific person, if you need to work anonymously, or if you are setting up several computers that will be used in a public space, like the computer lab or at school. And some people just prefer the local account because it's simpler and they don't want to manage an online account with Microsoft. Just remember, if you decide to use a local account, there are lots of services and windows that will not work for you because they require the connection to an online account. If you do not have a Microsoft online account and you want to use one, you can create a new account at outlook.com or you can create a new account when you go through the first time set up your computer. But you may already have a Microsoft account which you set up for more other service. If so, you don't have to set up another new account. Existing accounts that you might have includes an Outlook.com account, Xbox Live, or an Office 365 account. If you have any of these accounts, you can use it to sign into Windows. Thanks for watching.